Hello viewers, welcome to Apichip. You must have heard the term Kubernetes. It is quite popular these days. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn and understand the Kubernetes architecture and its internals. For this, we already have written a blog post on understanding Kubernetes architecture. So let's deep dive into it. First of all, we will understand what is Kubernetes. So as you might be knowing, Kubernetes is a container management platform. So you run your application inside a container and to manage those containers, Kubernetes comes into existence. Kubernetes was created by Google and written in Go language. It is also known as K8S, the shorthand notation. This is how the Kubernetes cluster looks like. So it has master and several worker nodes. So overall the cluster comprises of uh, these two things, master and nodes. Nodes can be as many as depending on your, uh, num depending on your applications and the uh, workload you want to. Now we will go into all of these one by one. So first of all, we will look into master node. Master is basically the control plane or the brain of Kubernetes cluster. Master comprises of few components such as API server, cluster store, scheduler and controller. So this is how it looks like. So this is your master node on which there is a component API server, controller, scheduler and cluster store. Now let's see what all these components do. API server. It exposes a REST API to talk to Kubernetes cluster. So basically this is the gateway to talk to the Kubernetes cluster. It consumes a JSON. So whatever things we want to create, we are going to specify in a JSON or a YAML file and we will provide it to API server. And one more thing, API server is the component which talks to the rest of the master components. Now comes cluster store. So basically it's a key value store which stores the cluster state and do the config management. So basically it stores all these cluster related data. Then scheduler. Scheduler watches API server for new pods. So if there is a request to create a new pod, scheduler comes into play and it assigns node to work. As of now, you must be wondering what is a pod. We are going to look into it as well. But for now, just remember scheduler watches API server for new pods and assign it to a node. Then comes controller. Controller is a daemon that watches the state of the cluster and, uh, and maintain the desired state. For example, if you said that your application should have uh, four replicas, then controller watches over it, over the API server and uh, it tries to maintain that much number of repl replicas. If a pod or a node goes out due to anything, then uh, it again uh, updates the config and tries to maintain that desired state. Its example are replication controller, namespace controller, and many more. Other than this, it performs garbage collection of pods and nodes as well. So this is how the master node looks like. As I said, we are going to talk to API server. But how we are going to talk to API server is through kubectl. So kubectl is a command line tool which you can install on your laptop or any workstation node and uh, with kubectl commands you specify json or yml and you give it to api server and then api servers talk to rest of the master components and do the desired stuff so this is the master node uh, we are going to we are go also going to look into the complete flow of the request among these but before that let's also look at the node so basically a node is a VM uh, instance on which your uh, Kubernetes stuff and your application will be running so a node comprises of kubelet, container engine and kube proxy 
Kubelet is basically a Kubernetes as agent which registers nodes with the cluster and it watches API server. So basically Kubelet also talks to API server and uh, it instantiate ports and report back to API server. So basically Kubernet, uh, Kubelet is going to uh, interact with um, your API server and uh, it's, it will be only reporting to API server. If port fails, it reports uh, to the master and master decides what to do. And uh, Kubelet exposes 10255 uh, port on the node. Then uh, one more component is container engine. So basically it is uh, the container runtime environment. So it does container management like pulling images, starting, stopping containers. Usually Docker is used for container runtime. Then comes Kube proxy. It is responsible for networking and uh, it provides unique IP to the pods. So uh, basically it will assign an IP to the pod. All container in a pod share, share same IP and load balances across all the pods in a service. So you must be wondering what is a pod as I have talked about it many times and also the service. So let's go ahead. As of now, just remember a node consists of kubelet, container runtime and kube proxy. Let's see what is pod. So basically pod is an environment to run containers. So your application runs as a container uh, which is wrapped up in a single unit which is pod. So it is an environment uh, to run containers. It have a network stack, kernel namespace and one or more container running. So container always runs inside a pod. Pod can have multiple containers. So this is your pod. It will share, it will have an IP to uh, interact with your application from the other pod and uh, then you can have multiple containers inside it. So if you want to increase uh, the number of uh, instances of your application then you are simply going to increase the number of pods and this will scale up your application too. So it is also a single unit uh, of scaling in Kubernetes. As in practice, uh, uh, multiple containers are not run inside a pod. Uh, there is uh, only one container is run inside a pod, although you can run multiple containers unless they are tightly coupled. So, uh, so consider a, a pod as a single environment, a single unit in which your application container will run. Now comes service. So pods comes and go with different IPs as we said kube proxy gives IP to the pod. So if multiple uh, pods uh, comes and go because of scaling or because uh, of any node uh, getting crashed then in that case uh, the IPs will be different and to interact with your application will be difficult. So uh, to have a single source of interaction with your pods service comes in into play. So, we, uh, so the kube proxy provides service uh, IP and a DNS. So, all the requests coming to a specific application will uh, will send request to your service, and your service will load balance it to the desired pods. So, service has single IP and DNS created with manifest in JSON. So, service is basically uh, you are as you create your uh, deployments and application though so you have to create the service as well with the, your JSON file all new pod gets added and registered to the service so all the backend uh, pods will be registered to the um, corresponding service which pod should be assigned to which service is decided by labels so when you create a manifest JSON file you specify labels in it so service will have certain labels and pods will ha also have certain labels and you can say that uh, if these matches X and Y labels then uh, all these pods should get registered to the service. So service and pods have labels on the basis of which service identified its pods. It only sends traffic to healthy pods. Service can point things outside the cluster as well and it uses TCP by default. All that can use UDP as well. 
Now comes the deployment. So deployment is a Kubernetes object whose task is to manage identical pods running and upgrading them in controlled way. So whenever you are going to deploy your application, what you are going to do is you are going to create deployments. So deployments are being created uh, with the same stuff, YML and JSON manifest. It is deployed via API server. As I told you, API server is the only gateway to talk to your Kubernetes cluster. It provides uh, update of pods and uh, also provide rollbacks. So this is how your deployment manifest look like. You specify the API version. You tell that uh, this is a deployment object and uh, you provide metadata uh, and specification. Replica should be four. So there would be four pods running off it. So, and there are many more stuff in the YML, which we are not going to look right now, but you are free to explore. So uh, these are the basic stuff and uh, now comes the detailed architecture. So this is the detailed architecture. This is your master having API server, controller, cluster, scheduler. This is your kubectl installed on your local uh, machine and uh, with commands you provide JSON YML. And here are your set of nodes on which uh, different pods are there. Now let's deep dive into the complete process, what happens behind the scene. So kubectl writes to API server and API server validates the request and passes it to cluster store. So for the cluster store, generally etcd is used. So API, API server stores all the information to cluster store. Cluster store uh, notifies back to API server and API server invokes the scheduler. So basically you have uh, requested a deployment. So this, these are the steps that is going to happen. So with the help of kubectl, you are going to say to API server, API server will validate the request and store it to cluster store. Cluster store uh, notice, notifies back to the API server and then API server and scheduler have a watching mechanism between them. So it invokes scheduler. Scheduler decides where to run the pod and return that to API server. So all of the component are talking to API server and API server is writing back to the etcd or your cluster store. API server persisted to etcd and etcd notifies back uh, the API server again and API server invokes the kubelet in the corresponding node. So kubelet is our, is our Kubernetes agent uh, that is running on the node. So API server invokes the kubelet. Then kubelet talks to Docker daemon running uh, using the API over the Docker, Docker socket container. So uh, kubelet is going to tell uh, your container runtime to create a container. Then after that kubelet again update the pod status to API server and then API server persists the new state in the etcd. So this is how Kubernetes works. So we have tried to cover the uh, minimum possible stuff to make you understand how Kubernetes works. You can set up Kubernetes cluster on your uh, uh, on AWS as well and on Google Cloud as well and uh, on your local machine as well. So we have created a couple of uh, blog posts and video tutorials for the same. So this post tells you how to set up Kubernetes cluster on AWS using COPS. And we do have a blog post and video tutorial on uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, for your uh, local development environment with Minikube. So you can go through all these and uh, in case of any doubts or suggestion uh, reach out reach us out thanks for watching